Hey friends, welcome to Worship with First United Methodist Church, a church that's on the move for Christ here in Winchester and Frederick County, Virginia. My name is Sean Devilleis, and the pastor here at First, and on behalf of all of us, we're so grateful that we can be together for online worship on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, a couple things you should know. First, we're pre-recorded, so you'll see us in different times, different outfits throughout the service, but it's a great way for you to know what our in-person worship service is like, and also to see a bunch of people that make up the life of our church. We're going to start a new series today called Love Does. It's based on a book by the author Bob Goff, and we're hearing about the way God is with us and how God's love is experienced by the way we're with each other. So throughout the service, now you can like, comment, or share, whether you're with us on Facebook or YouTube. Let us know where you're worshiping from, any prayer requests you might have. Uh, it's a great way to see how the Spirit brings us all together. With that, again, we are excited to be together and excited to worship. Let's worship together. Good morning. My name is Joellen Smith, and I'm reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. This is the coming of the Holy Spirit and P as Peter addresses the crowd. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Fragla and Pamphraglia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belong to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, and our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, 
these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hey again, friends. If you missed it at the beginning, my name is Sean Devilites. I'm the pastor here at First UMC. And today on this Pentecost Sunday, we get to begin a new worship series that's called Love Does, and it's based on a book by the author Bob Goff. And we're doing this because in the church world, we often hear of God's love, and sometimes it feels like it's this nest that's just out there. And so over these next couple of weeks, we're talking about ways that we can express, that we can live into, that we can do things that share God's love with each other and with ourselves. And this week, we're focusing on this idea called being together, this presence, this abiding nature of God, the way God abides and lives and stays with us and the ways that we can stick with one another as well and have that be the first and foremost way that we're willing to share God's love with somebody else. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for the ways that you bring us together. We give you thanks for the opportunity that we have to live together. As we're joined together in worship at this time, we celebrate this community. But we also ask that you bless us because, God, we want to grow together and want to learn together, both more about you, more about ourselves, and more about each other. We love you. Amen. So many of you who have, have known me for a little while know that running is something that's become a practice in my life. It's something I like to do a lot. Uh, and it actually wasn't always that way, believe it or not. Um, something running has, has had this big impact in my life, but in my relationship with it has, has waned at times. It's changed over the years uh, in terms of how I am intentional about it, right? Uh, thankfully, right now, it's something that I get to do a good deal, and that's great. But all of that started because of a guy named Adam. And you know, you see, you should know that my running career started in high school, it was during my sophomore year, and I had just finished a season of junior varsity football. And I started running track actually to try to get in better shape for football because I didn't want to be the fifth string defensive back on the JV squad again the next year. Uh, and over that year of running track, I realized that I actually like that sport more as far as being a part of it. And so that summer, the track coach invited me to do cross country instead of football. And I took him up on it. And one thing that I learned at that time, you know, I knew cross country involved running cross country, it felt like. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, I didn't really realize just how long folks ran for when they did that sport. And I also forgot that, you know, when you run track, you're typically on a flat surface, right? Because it's track and cross country was not on flat surfaces, it turns out. Enter this guy named Adam. Adam was already on the cross country team and was the same year as me in school and took it upon himself to run with me that first summer as I got ready to participate in the season. And those first couple runs, y'all, <laughs> they were the worst. I have vivid memories of standing on the shoulder of Baron Cameron Avenue in Reston, Virginia, the humidity slowly choking the life out of me and my pride, wondering how the heck I had gotten myself into this situation. Why was I even doing this? And at every stop, every side stitch, every grumble about my perceived life trajectory at that time, there was Adam. Adam was there with me, almost never made fun of me, but never left me, and he'd just say, I got you, let's just run a little bit farther. And that kind of you know, willingness to stick with me encouraged me. It was the reason I finished training for the summer and stayed on the team that fall. And it's a lot of how running has become basically a spiritual practice for me today, all because of this guy named Adam and his willingness to stick with me. I'm sure all of us have stories like that for some spot of our lives. And it's because for, my, for me, it was Adam, but for you, it was somebody else, someone who embodied the kind of compassion, care, and love that God intends for us to experience together in this world. And it's that kind of love that God shares with us each day. This presence that doesn't quit, this presence that doesn't grow tired, this presence that doesn't abandon us. It simply abides and stays and persists. You know, this notion of God's presence in our lives is something we talk often about in the church. And it's also something that's made abundantly clear in the Pentecost story that we find in Acts. And while there's a lot that may catch our attention in this passage this morning, 
for example, there's, there's lots of names that we hear in this passage. There was this concept that people witnessed folks who were so excited that they looked at those folks and thought they were drunk on wine. And then there's Peter saying, actually, it's not the wine because it's only nine in the morning. By the way, it's worth mentioning, uh, there's notes in my study Bible, that wine was considered to be something that enhanced prophetic statements. And that's why the crowd thought that they might be drinking wine when they... I'll leave it at that, right? In these 50 days from Passover to Pentecost, the followers of Jesus would have experienced these miracles, would have heard of the ascension of Jesus into heaven and been told of this Holy Spirit. And all of this Holy Spirit, fiery tongue, prophetic talk is centered on the idea that God chooses to abide, chooses to stay and persist in presence with God's people. And that compassionate, persistent, and abiding nature of God is what I'd like us to focus on today. Because you see, you could spend a whole lot of time trying to understand how God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, how the, the Trinity, as we come to know it, connects to each other. And for today, I think if we think about it as this idea that there are three different ways of experiencing God's nature. There are three persons that share in one divine nature. We'll hold all of those questions over here. Again, what I want us to focus on is the way that God stays with us and stayed with the people in Acts. And to see that, we're going to think about what this gift of the Holy Spirit really was for, like how it connected, what, why God would share that in the first place. And to do that, we're going to go back to verses 4 through 8. All of the people were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? God's gift of the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost is this ability for folks to understand, to get one another, despite their different backgrounds. And not despite because like they were bad to have differences, but appreciating their differences. It's like God is saying like, I, I, I created your differences on purpose. And this is a way to honor those differences and still bring you together in community. They get each other, they understand each other. All these different stories, backgrounds, what have you, all these believers are brought together in community. You know, you could think of it as it's impressive that they somehow learn to understand each other's tongues, but really it's just the fact that God chose to connect them with their differences. That is such a big deal. It's actual evidence that the Holy Spirit, that God kind of creates us to be unique, and in our uniqueness, we all have this same sacred worth. And frankly, as people today, we're just getting around to understanding just how deep unique we are, how many differences we have, and that yet God still had a part in creating each and every one of us because God did create each and every one of us, right? What brings us together is this willingness to care for each other, to abide with each other, to make effort to understand each other, and to persist with each other. That's a lot to take in. And it, it's a lot because that willingness that's embodied in the early church, the early church that we learn about in the book of Acts, right? It's that willingness to do that that we find so frequently tested today. Think about that. It, it is possible that whether this is the dozenth time you've celebrated Pentecost or you've never really heard of why Pentecost is a thing in the first place, that God brings people together with their differences. And that is something that is so hard to picture in our culture today. We see here in Scripture the church that our church is intended to be a community in which we care for and stick with and persist with and abide with each other. And to do that, we have to be willing to give up ourselves to that cause. We have to be willing to be vulnerable enough to, to, to open ourselves up right? To be willing to care for each other in that way. 
and say, yeah, the rest of the world sure feels like this constant effort of drawing lines in the sand and saying that there's some people we should care for and some we shouldn't. We also know it's not the world's fault. That's just something that's, that's coming out and expressing itself probably because of who knows what. I'd venture to say it's, it's from not understanding just how much that goes against what God would want for us, right? That we're not intended to draw these lines. We're intended to, to understand that God asks us, shows us at Pentecost that we don't leave each other alone, that we stay with each other, that our job is to tell one another, I've got you, even when we stumble. Even when we fall, when we get a side stitch in our spiritual walks or runs, that we are still willing to be there for one another. That willingness to be relationally resilient. It's something that's a gift, right? It, it comes to the grace of God. It is one of the first ways that we see love do something in our lives. Bob Goff writes in the first chapter, The world can make you think that love can be picked up at a garage sale or enveloped in a Hallmark card. But the kind of love that God created and demonstrated is a costly one because it involves sacrifice and presence. It's a love that operates more like a sign language than just being spoken outright. Love does. You know, when we think about how love does things, the way people are there with us is one of the ways that love does something for us. We experience God's love with the way people are willing to walk alongside us in life. In the world of the church, we also have things like communion that celebrate this kind of love that, that's done in a certain way. That there's an action, there's a way of pointing to it and saying, I better understand how God loves me because of how we do this practice together. In the United Methodist Church, we practice an open table. And so we're reminded not only of what Jesus chose to do with the disciples on the last night of his human life on earth, and the way that Jesus chose to break bread and to share a drink and to, to, to share grace, to, to forgive sin, right? That that's what Jesus chose to do. We remember that part of the story, and we also remember that this is open table, that all you have to do is be willing to come to this table to be there. And that challenges us as a church to look at the way we do things in the world and say, how can we make more space at this table? Not how can we change the chairs around so that they're more comfortable or necessarily anything like that, but how do we make sure that everyone who wants to be here has a chance to be here? How do we make sure that everyone who is looking for people to go through life with them, how is there space for them today? And as we as a church prepare to build a facility, I mean, man, that's a big thing to build right now. As we're looking to create a space physically for people to come and understand that God, we also know we're building relationships in such a way. We're building a space that doesn't have walls where folks can understand that kind of love. How is it that we choose to say, I want to be there for you. I want to abide with you. To say, I've got you. How do we communicate that to folks in our community? First, it's by willing to go and be with them in the first place. You know, ways that we can share time, whether it's, it's at school or at work or in our neighborhoods, to say, I've got you. I know that you're going through stuff. I know that things are hard. Here's how I can simply be here and listen and do what you're doing and show you that I care. Not tell you how to do it better, not tell you how to do it differently, but simply just to be there for one another. So I think that's those moments. That's how God starts to change our lives. Because it no longer becomes this thing that's out there, right? That's, that's theorized or, or written about forever. It's this thing that we actually get to do together. So that even when we stumble and tighten up and make mistakes and fall short of whatever it is that we are hoping to be in this world, we can remember what love does for us and to us. And remember that first and foremost, that love does something 
because God is with us each and every day. This God that loves us, cares for us, created us, abides with us, that God that, that says the Holy Spirit is upon you, you are not alone, and that's why we can do this together. Because in a world where this is the third consecutive week that I have stood in this space and wondered about what it means that another shooting has taken place, in this world that for another consecutive week, I know people who are, who are deeply grieving how it is the world looks the way it does. Or past the hundredth day of a war between Russia and Ukraine, all of these things matter. All of those people matter. And today we're reminded that God is with them and calls us, asks us to say, how will you abide with them too? How will you persist in creating a community and building community and building relationships even when things are hard like this? How can you look at the world and say, you know what, if nothing else, how can I remind people of their sacred worth before God? Because in those moments of saying, I've got you, there's hope. In those moments of saying, we just have to run a little farther, there's grace. And in those moments where there are no words at all, there is God. A God who builds, a God who abides, and a God who persists. And through that God, we see love do incredible things. Will you pray with me? God, we hear of your works in the past, and we know of your works in our life, and we know that you are continuing to do incredible things around us. We give you thanks today for those that are here with us and those that could not join us. And we give you thanks for all the people in our lives that have been there, that have got us. And we give thanks for the ways that you've got us too. And trusting in that relationship, trusting in the promise that you give us, that you always will have us, that you always will persist with us. We come together in prayer and lift up leaders and people of our community, state, nation, and world. We pray for all those affected by COVID-19. We pray for first responders, for those who serve and protect and care for and teach and who learn. God, I pray that we have the courage to be hospitable towards others, to be an anti-racist people until racism is gone from this world. We pray for those affected by disaster, natural and man-made. We pray for the people of Ukraine, and Russia. Pray for the people of Buffalo. Pray for the people of Uvalde. Pray for the people of Tulsa. All those around the world suffering from unrest and conflict. And God, we ask that you continue to work in us and work on us and move us and stir us until we find ways to do no harm to our neighbors and to beyond that, to do good. We lift up those who use their voice to amplify the voice of others who are oppressed. And we lift up those serving away from home, those without homes, and those who could not be with us today. We commit ourselves to resisting evil, injustice, and oppression in any single form they can present themselves, and we pray for peace. We lift up Bob, Brian, Gary, John, Joy, Lori, Reba, Dorothy, and others on our church prayer list. And pause and I lift up others on our hearts and minds as well. God, for all these people, each and every one of these persons that we give thanks to you and ask that you continue to reveal yourself to them and to us in the ways that we do not understand. We also ask that you empower us, that you equip us, that you remind us of what love can do and that we might be willing to share that love with others in ways we do understand. That, God, we love you. Amen. At this point in our service, we get to worship together with our offering. And there's a couple different ways you can share in your offering of what you have, your resources, your gifts, your time with us here at First UMC. You can give financially by going to our website. It's a safe and secure option on our giving page. You can also mail your offering in to the church during the week or bring it to an in-person gathering. 
You can also give of your time. Uh, the ways that we've seen fruit of that in the last few weeks, we put together 62 hygiene kits this past weekend uh, through our mission project at church. And that's because of folks like you who are willing to invest time and resources and, and just being the hands and feet of Christ. That's 62 opportunities for people to know that they're cared for. That's gonna go through the United Methodist Committee on Relief. We're grateful for that. And also know that in these coming weeks, there's opportunities to volunteer, there's opportunities to serve, there's opportunities to pray. And really every single day is an opportunity to do that. So as you share your prayers with us, your presence, your gifts, everything that you do offer to us, know that it is appreciated. Know that we are grateful for it. And know that it is part of helping to share God's love here in our community and beyond. So with that, we now have the opportunity to celebrate our offerings by joining together in a musical offering. Let us pray. Generous God, thank you for sending your spirit, the spirit of the risen Christ from heaven to everyone on the first Pentecost that changed many lives. Help us to be like the early disciples, praying patiently as we wait for your guidance and power. Fill our hearts and minds with your gifts of faith, hope, and love. May our conversations with people of every language and culture around us witness to your grace and mercy. In thanksgiving for all that you have done for us, we dedicate ourselves and our offerings to your good purposes in the world. Through our church's mission and by the power of your spirit, we bring these gifts to you now. Amen. Friends, this Sunday at First United Methodist Church is a communion Sunday. We have one once a month. And communion in the United Methodist Church is a sacrament, uh, like it's also a sacrament in other denominations as well. But by sacrament, we mean it's an outward sign of an inward grace. It's something that helps us symbolize and remember something about God, and something about Jesus. In this case, we're remembering the Last Supper and the fact that Christ gave himself up for us. Also, we remember that this is something that Christ told us to go and do. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And so we think about that, what it means uh, and how that connects to our growth, our spiritual maturity. Remember the fact that we love and worship a compassionate God, a God who's willing to break for us, to give us life in a way. That kind of willingness, that kind of vulnerability, that kind of care is something that we are reminded of. And also reminded of how God is there for each and every one of us. There is no limit to who can come to the table. And so as we celebrate communion, perhaps differently than maybe you have before, as we think about what it means to share from a cup or uh, bread today, uh, whatever you might be able to do that, remember that you are God's people. And for all the ways that we fall short, we come to the table knowing that we are not the people that we can be the best of our abilities every single day, all the time. We fall short and make mistakes. We do things that separate us from God. But we know that every time we come back to that table, every time we come back and say, God, I want to be with you, we are welcomed back and we have new life in that way. And so today as we grow together and we're always growing together, may you remember the ways that we're also growing with God and growing deeper in a relationship with a God that loves you and values you and wants you to be a part of this journey together. May you remember that today whenever we have a chance to share in a meal on our own uh, with folks in spirit, or also with those in our house. Friends, this concludes our worship service today, and we're so grateful that you chose to be a part of our online worship this day on Pentecost. Uh, something we'll let you know about in these coming weeks, two things. First, next Sunday, uh, we're going to be having a meeting in person after worship at our uh, Apple Pie Ridge campus that's going to be talking about building community here in Winchester and Frederick County. Uh, ways that we can continue to be good neighbors to, for example, the schools that we're neighbors to, but also others in the community. And ways that we can make sure folks know that our church, <laughs> right now it's really easy to think about when we don't have walls, but how we're always going to be a church that acts like we don't have walls. It's part of who we are, right? Also, I want you to know Vacation Bible School is going to be coming up at the end of July. That's an opportunity for kids uh, that are on the younger side to elementary school age to come and participate in the evenings during the week of July, I believe it's 25th to 29th. Um, might have the days crossed a little bit, but you'll see that through Facebook and through uh, all of our other publications as well. It's a really cool opportunity for folks just to come and get to be with one another to have fun, to, to share in God's love with each other. And if you're interested in helping to lead that or just interested in helping, please let us know uh, so we can get you connected. But with that, now we get to go. Friends, go knowing the Holy Spirit is upon you. Go knowing that you have a gift of presence to share with every single person in your life and that you have a gift of God's love that is yours and yours to share. Go in the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Go in peace. Amen.